Okay guys, for today's lesson, you're gonna learn about solving quadratic equations, but with square roots. So we know when we solve quadratic equations, there's multiple different methods we can use, and that involves a graphing, it involves quadratic formula, um, also factoring, and there's square roots. And honestly, it kind of depends on how each equation is set up. Eventually, you're gonna be able to choose which method you wanna use. But today, we're just gonna focus on solving with square roots. So my goal when I solve this equation is always has, you know, what it has been in the past when you solve equations is to get the variable by itself. So I want to get this P all alone. So to start off with, I'm going to subtract this three right there. Okay. So I'm going to subtract three that cancels. I bring down negative six P squared equals, and then I have negative 109. Okay. Um, what you want to do next is we want to get this p squared alone, so we're going to divide by negative 6 to both sides. Okay, so if I have, um, well, negative divided by negative is a positive, so 109 divided by 6, you see what we get there, we get 18.16 repeating. Um, for the sake of today, let's just go ahead and round everything to its nearest tenth. Okay, so I'm going to say p squared equals... 18.2. Okay, so that's, that's rounded off. Now, I want to solve this, so I'm going to go ahead and do a square root to uh, break apart that p squared, which gives me just the p. But I know I also have to do it over here as well, okay? And then I take the square root of 18.2, so square root 18.2 equals... And you see what we end up with? We end up with about 4.26. Um, again, let's just round it to the nearest tenth. So we'll say about 4.3. Uh, but remember, square root, you're going to have two answers. you got a positive answer and you have a negative answer when you take that square root. Because positive 4.3 times 4.3 is about that. Negative 4.3 times negative 4.3 is also about that answer. Okay, and remember, what this really means is if you were to graph this, um, there would be a parabola out there that would touch the x-axis somewhere around negative 4.3, and it also touched somewhere about positive 4.3. Okay, um, it's a negative one, so it might look something similar to that. Okay, but 4.3 plus or minus is our solution to that, which means that's also our zeros. Um, that's also called our roots. So zeros, roots, solutions, all the same thing. And again, they just refer to where it's touching the x-axis. Okay, number two. Um, to do this one, again, I want to get this x squared alone. So first thing I would do is add one to both sides. So that cancels. I get three x squared equals 300. So I would divide everything by 3. Um, I get x squared equals 100. This is an easy one, right? Perfect squares. So take the square root of the left side and the right side. And we get x equals, don't forget, it's two answers, plus and negative 10. So plus or minus 10. So again, our two solutions for this one would be plus or minus 10. Um, if you notice, when we're solving these, we can solve these by square roots. Uh, and we're not using quadratic formula because of one common feature. If you look at all the equations on this page, none of them have a B value. Or your missing B value is actually zero. So when you have a missing B value, um, it's way easier to do square roots to solve as opposed to using quadratic formula. But again, you can only do that when you have the missing B value. Okay, number three. So I would subtract three to both sides. Um, negative 6k squared equals negative 336. So if I take, divide by negative six now. So 336 divided by six. I know my answer is positive. So I get k squared is equal to 56. Um, I know this is not gonna be a perfect square so I'm going to get a decimal answer when I take the square root of the left side and the right side. So I get K equals, 
and the square root of 56 rounded to the nearest tenth. So I'd round that off to about 7.5. Don't forget, it's plus or minus. Got to have your two answers there. Okay, plus or minus 7.5. All right, number four. Um, I would just subtract 8 to both sides. That cancels out. So you got 3x squared um, equals 266, take away 8, 258. So if I take 258 now and divide it by 3, you get 86. So x squared equals 86. I know that's not a perfect square. Okay, so we're going to square root the left side and the right side. So you get x equals plus or minus. Okay, square root of 86. Uh, round it off to the nearest tenth. We'll say about 9.3. Okay, number five. Um, so start off this one. I'm going to subtract 6 to both sides. Okay, that cancels. And you get 6k squared is equal to negative 10. Okay, divide by 6 to both sides. That cancels. So you got k squared equals... Um, you have negative 10 over 6, which, you know, would reduce down to negative 5 thirds. So you're going to take the square root, but see what happens here? This is like the situation we talked about earlier where you have a square root underneath or a negative under the square root symbol. Um, and that can't happen because there's no number that multiplied by itself. that's going to equal negative 5 thirds. So when you see a situation like this, you double check that your math was correct. Um, your answer is going to be no solution, okay, which means there's going to be no roots. There's no zeros for this one. Again, that parabola is just going to, it's a parabola that's out there, but it's just not going to touch the x-axis. Okay, number six. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add 10 to both sides. So, cancels out. And you get 49x squared equals 49. Can divide both sides by 49 then and you get x squared is equal to 1 take the square root and we see well that's going to be x equals plus or minus square root of 1 is 1 okay number 7 subtract the 8 8r squared equals 32 Divide both sides by 8. That cancels out. So you get r squared is equal to 4. Okay, so you would do the square root. And then r is going to equal plus or minus 2. And last one for today. Let's start off with subtract that 3. Come over here, subtract 3. So that cancels out. You have negative 3a squared equals negative 285, so I'm going to take 285, divide that by 3. My answer is going to be a positive because you got the two negatives. And I get a squared is equal to 95. Um, this one is not a perfect square. So I'm going to do square root, left side, right side. You get a equals plus or minus. And the square root of 95 rounded off to the nearest tenth is about 9.7. Okay, so you guys are going to solve. Uh, notice that if these are not perfect squares, they actually round them to the nearest thousandth. So same thing we did, they just go a little bit further. All right, solve number nine. Number 10. Number 11. 12. 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, and last, 18.